So far we've been using subqueries as part of the from or select clauses. Such subqueries are convenient but come with some limitations. Common table expressions, or CTE, are a more powerful alternative to subqueries. A CTE is declared at the beginning of the query, and can be used as a virtual table, including as part of joins and subqueries. Let's write a basic CTE to understand the syntax. Of course we can use windowing functions and aggregations inside a CTE. We can also use a CTE multiple times, including in more complex situations where we want to combine multiple result sets in a single query. One of the interesting capabilities of a CTE is recursion. The syntax is a little peculiar, but allows for powerful operations. The definition of the recursive CTE comes in two parts, the anchor member, which is a query that locates the initial record, and the recursive member, which references the CTE itself. Let's look at an example, getting the entire stock price history of Uber, with a calculated column that indicates whether the stock closes higher or lower than the previous day. This will be an interesting example, as we'll combine a CTE, a few subqueries, and an aggregation.
as we can see, a recursive CTE is not immensely intuitive, and there is a limited number of use cases. If you do a web search, you will mostly find examples that involve an organizational chart, using the manager slash employee paradigm. That's not a common use case, and it can also be misleading as it seems to indicate that a recursive CTE is somewhat linked to a hierarchy, which is not true. A more common real-life example could be a click-through analysis to figure out a customer journey on your website. A recursive CTE can also be quite useful if you're involved in financial forensics, as it provides a convenient way to analyze sequences of accounting transactions. Don't miss the other videos in this amazing series. If you watch them all, you will know more about querying relational databases than most data engineers.